The London Hearing Voices project works in partnership with prisons to offer peer support groups to people in prison that have voices, visions or other unusual sensations. We support the prisons to set up these peer support groups. We train officers, we train healthcare staff and then as the groups get going we're kind of in there with the people doing the groups and really making sure that they're done safely and in the best possible way. We have two separate groups now at Holloway. Um, the first group we set up in May 2011 and that was a group of women that are on our mental health assessment unit, so they're women that are quite unwell. The second group we set up at the end of last year, and that's for women who are on, in the main prison, and they're relatively stable in their mental health, and they're just looking for a different kind of support. Well, we're an all-male establishment, and the, the place we actually run is an acute psychiatric assessment centre, so they're all in the psychiatric crisis, actively psychotic, paranoid as well, and also in a very low point in their life. There are a range of different services that work with people that hear voices in prisons. You've got mental health inreach teams and drug and alcohol services, etc. The challenge, though, is that the need is so great and they're under quite a lot of pressure, I think, that they just can't work with everybody that needs support. So there's a vast number of people in prisons at the moment that won't be accessing services that need this help. Normally, people who hear voices don't, aren't comfortable talking to other people about it. Um, especially in prison, there's even more stigma around mental health. Um, you've got your reputation, you've got your image to keep up. Some of the women who attend the group have actually never really spoken to anyone else before about having these experiences. Uh, we have had one member in particular who said coming to prison was the first time she started to share with people that she was having very difficult times with very challenging voices. We've also worked with another lady who um, coming into prison was, was the trigger for these experiences and she was incredibly distressed and found a lot of support from attending the group. In the night, you know, I see some stuff moving. It's like devil stuff. Evil. It's hard to believe. This is my problem. And the devil's going to control and kill people. Even when you pray, he don't want to go. He don't go. It's like a sudden attack. It frightens me. It tells you to do things, and you have to do it. I hear voices every day of my life. So the, the first group we set up, on the mental health assessment unit. It's more of a drop-in because there's a, a target audience, so the people are there all the time, so they can come in and out as they please. The second group was a bit more tricky, um, and we, we sent flyers round to all prisoners, um, putting, putting a flyer in each cell so that people knew about it, and we had a launch group, so anyone could come just for that information, and that group's full now. We have a waiting list. The first thing we'll do is lay down the ground rules because it's confidential. It's also a case of creating that safe environment because without that they're unable to discuss any issues. And then it's basically a peer-to-peer -peer support system. We generally start to guide it and lead it gently. I would say successful groups are usually when people start to talk about their experiences and they can't explain it and somebody else will explain their experiences and between both of them they try to work out what's really going on. As a voice here it's one thing to talk with a professional about your experiences um, but to actually meet other people that have gone through it too when you yourself might feel like you're the only one that's just priceless. If somebody's talking about that things we'll ask them how they feel about that. If somebody talks about a belief system for example God speaks to me directly we'll say that must be quite scary or that must be quite intimidating at times. So we would never actually directly challenge or try to put off somebody or belittle or stop somebody from talking or expressing. There's no one here to help me. There's too much pressure in here. I need someone to support me. In the group, you can talk about your problems. Before, you'd think people wouldn't understand because it's complicated. Listening to other people in the group helps. It's just good to know other people are going through the same things as you. You can get ideas on how to cope. It's like a new day, like everything is lifted off your shoulders. One prison was, you know, quite apprehensive and cautious about having a group just because they thought it wouldn't work. They, didn't, they thought the men wouldn't um, share, they wouldn't open up. Um, there's Peer support is not going to work, people, you know, guys in the same room sharing. And from the very first session, it was 
totally the other way around in that the whole of the group, the whole of the hour session was people talking about their experiences. People are so open when they've really got no reason to trust us or trust each other. That's the power of just needing to talk, I think. An individual that was felt to be quite challenging to all services across the prison um, came to Edison Unit um, due to his challenging behaviour and risks um, we had put him on a free man unlock which restricted his access outside of the cell. We facilitated that the facilitator for the group would attend and speak with him directly at his door. Um, over a period of time we was able to encourage him to continue to engage with us which also brought changes in his behaviour. Through that we was able to facilitate him coming out, joining in the group and being an active member of the group um, which from there he moved on from being discharged from the Addison unit into the main prison where he's currently holding down the job as a cleaner. We've been working with one lady now for over a year and initially when she started to attend the group she really struggled. It was obvious that she wasn't very confident and she um, was a little bit hesitant about being in the room and sharing her experiences. She started to talk about her voices that were really commanding um, and very challenging and caused her a lot of distress. They'd often tell her to self-harm and not to eat and she was really struggling with her self-harm and she wasn't eating at the time. Um, we explored um, these experiences and with time she became more confident. She started to share with us that she started to talk back to her voices, that she was trying to eat a little bit more and also um, not self-harming as much. Other prisons will benefit this service because there's been very good feedback um, from both the members who have come to the group and also staff in all the prisons that we've set groups up in so far. Um, I think staff talk about a really a greatly increased awareness of the people that they're working with, um, how to relate to them, how to support them. Um, and the members are much happier. So things like self-harm, stress, um, you know, aggression, kind of difficult feelings, experiences they're going through are all really helped by people attending the group. I feel very good, you know, when I go to the group. Because everyone's the same here, you understand me. You know what it might be like when I feel. When we share together, I know it's not me alone. It's horrible because you're closed in. You can't control how you're feeling. But the group is an escape. You can release all the pressure that's built up. I would definitely recommend hearing voices to other prisons. I'd recommend it to most services as well. Most patients feel that they are the only ones suffering. You know, this gives an, an open forum where people can see you're not the only one suffering, but then they've also got another point to call for, for help. I think hearing voices groups are a really cost-effective way of supporting people in prison. It's surprisingly easy to set up one of these groups, I think. Um, if you work in a prison and you're, you're interested in finding out more, we'll come and meet with you or speak to you and find out how we can best support you to move forward. We find the groups are totally worthwhile. And if you look at the main prison as a whole, there isn't anything out there really that addresses it except for a professional referral to the services. But if you could actually have underneath that a peer support system that helps people that are actively psychotic, then I would say you have to really have it.